Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Hallelujah. I do love to sing to the people of this church pray. It's an insight. You're not going to be intimidated by this. But it's an insight into the spirituality of the first year that's coming from our heart. It doesn't be a fancy prayer. And I've been in places where there were more vowels and hitherto so flowery and the bill of what they were going to break up in English accent. But the Bible school the guy like that. Bless his heart. He probably has the church of 5,000 now, so maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Turn with me to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. I don't think we'll be long tonight. Hopefully we'll be long, but I think we'll be long. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of His countenance upon you and give you peace, joy, protection. What did I just do? I pronounce the what? A benediction or a blessing upon you. When I was a kid, I told you this story before. You know, my grandfather, my, my Pappy Dietrich told a lot of stories about when he worked in the coal mines and when he was a young man. They were always the same stories. <clears throat> but I, one thing I realized at one point, as I get older, they never, there was never any variance. They were, he never changed the stories. And you knew they were true, you know, they, they were real. I mentioned that uh, when I preached his funeral. But uh, I'm gonna tell you a story I told you before. When I was a kid, I don't even think I was going to school yet. I remember his name. In my mind, my memory, you know, sometimes you remember things in, if we were to go back and look at later, we'd say, uh, you know. But anyhow, you know, I remember being at night, we came up, my father and I came out of a department store. I, maybe it was downtown Harrisburg. I, I don't think Hills and Kmart, they came a little bit later on when I was little. I was born in 61. So this must have been like 65, 66, somewhere around. There. It was cold. It was right before Christmas. And there was a fellow there in full uniform with this trench coat and everything from the Salvation Army. I mean, this, in my mind, in my memory, this guy looked crisp, he looked sharp. And he was ringing his bell. <clears throat> my father reached in his pocket and he pulled out some coins and he gave them to me and he told me, he said, when you throw them, put them in that pocket. And when I did that, the man from the Salvation Army said to me, God bless you. I remember a warmth coming over something welling up inside of you. Like when your pappy kind of brushes your head and then pulls you in close to love him. I had never remember anybody ever saying to me before that, God bless you. That's what I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight. I'm going to talk about the spoken blessings. Turn to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Only kind of reference this a little bit tonight. Three, and uh, we'll read the first 12 verses very quickly, but not so quick. And we don't get what's being said. My brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive a greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeneth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts its great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless, therefore bless we God 
even the Father, and therefore we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth the fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the, olive, <clears throat> can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You know, here he's talking about <clears throat> talking about the tongue, and back in Numbers we're talking about the tongue being used as a form of blessing. A spoken blessing is a positive biblical statement that invokes the blessing of God in the life of another. Our words have great influence in the lives around us, especially upon children. Now, I, I feel shame because I've not been successful in this in my life. I have said things I wish I would have never said. My wife always says, well, we say things sometimes in the heat of the moment. Yeah, I know. I, when I look back at this stage in my life, I regret some of the things I've said to my kids out of anger, out of frustration. Regret the things that I've said to them. And what James is saying is we can't both bless and curse at the same time. You can't say, may God bless you ugly, miserable beast. Yeah, that's not a blessing. That would not be a blessing, right? But our words have the potential to do good or to do harm. Especially in the lives of the little ones around us. Sister Stacy, my granddaughter, has been singing those songs from Kids Crusade also. What a blessing. I wasn't there, but I saw the videos and I looked at the pictures. What a blessing for these kids. My daughter sent me a video of Junior was, I guess, sitting in the second pew one night. They were going to the sinner's prayer. He yawned through it, but he said the sinner's prayer. And uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. And the pastor said he asked Junior if he could pray with him one night. Junior was a little bit shy when we prayed for him. But Olivia did. Uh, a week before that, Olivia was sick. We stopped up on Friday night. When I get off work on Friday night, I'm home at 9 o'clock. So, he and I ran to Walmart. We got some things. We got some things for the kids. You know, we wanted to get Olivia Gatorade and Cool Pops because she was having a fever. And, of course, Apple believes that every child that still needs double stuffed Oreos, regular Oreos. We got all that. So... It works for me, but I don't feel well. I like the Oreo or three or four or more. But uh, she can, Kitty brought her out to the car and set her in the seat there. And I was talking to her, rubbed the back of her head, and Alice came out and I touched her forehead and she was warm. I said, This child has a fever. She said, I know, Dad, I know. And I said, Pop's going to pray for you. And pray for you. And you know, that, all that weekend, she kept saying to her mother, Pray for me. Pray for me. And then she wanted Pastor to pray for me. I told Alice. Alice told me how she wants to be prayed for now all the time. I said, that's because she's sensing and feeling the presence of God when we pray over her. Alice said, well, maybe. I said, no, there's no maybes about it. You know? But the words that we speak can have a tremendous influence upon our children. Turn to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to get Proverbs on and off here quickly this evening. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He that begetteth a fool doth it to his sorrow. That doesn't, that doesn't even seem right. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. No wonder it see right. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We can bless or we can curse. Now, curtain, right? cursing just isn't saying bad words. Cursing can be, you know, I hope you get what you deserve. I don't want anybody to get what they deserve because I believe in grace and mercy. I want God to be gracious to people. My flesh, you know, sometimes we think, you know, what might my flesh be? Like I said, well, I hope they get their justice over What was the problem with Jonah? What issue did Jonah have? He had an issue that God was going to be gracious to the people of Nineveh, and he had a tough time with that. 
How can you be gracious to a barbaric, bloodthirsty people like that? Now, some people at times talk about sinners, and they're almost, you can almost sense that they're anxious to see them go to hell. But God's not willing that any should perish. God's not wishing they go to hell. God's reaching out to the Holy Spirit's reaching out to them. Yes, it's up to them to make the decision, but God's not willing that any should perish. Let's be careful of the things we say in jest. Proverbs 16, 24. This isn't talking about saying anything in jest. I just threw that in there for free. But Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Pleasant words. Talk nice to me. One time, one of the things that we, we deal with on the phone at work, I'm not so much me anymore because I am nothing but claims once in a while I get it, is a, what we call third party authentication. They are people that are contracted by the very large dental uh, corporations to do the verification and also to, to do claim status. And they are from eight, they're from India. And you have, I have to realize that there's a cultural difference there. And I, I tell my co these people are calling about stupid. They're university students. That's who gets their job over there. These are guys that are studying to be lawyers, doctors. They're intelligent people. But uh, I remember one day, it's very easy to get very frustrated. It's a cultural thing, too. They're very determined. They don't know how to make a move for an answer. It's only like America. But I remember one day, as the call came in, this guy started talking to me. I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, be nice to him. He's going through a tough time. I, I didn't stop and say, you're going through a tough time? Trust me. I try to be as kind as I can, to be patient. But this verse here, Verse 24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. We want to, be, we want to project health into the lives of people. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. <clears throat> Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it you ever meet some people that you hate to ask them, hey, how are you? How's it going? Oh, boy. You just want to go, hey, hey, and keep on going. But you might have the good word for them. You might have the word that they need. I've, I've, I've been encouraged by things that children have said. I've been encouraged by things that people have said they didn't realize that God was using them. I've been encouraged by being blessed. I was in the uh, Holy Spirit Hospital many years ago. They're home now 20, 21 or 22 years ago. Been around that time, about 20 years ago. And uh, I was pretty discouraged. I had pneumonia. I was pretty discouraged. And the staff chaplain, one of the staff chaplains, making rounds. She was a Catholic nun. And she stopped in, got my information where I went to church. And she said to me at one point, uh, I think she was kind of just feeling me out to see if I'd be open or receptive to prayer. She said to me, uh, would you want prayer? I said, absolutely. And after we prayed, she said, do you mind if I speak a blessing? To you? Speak ten of them. God bless you. God bless you through that none. You know, so what does it mean to bless? The Greek word means to thank or invoke a benediction upon someone else. It's important when we see each other to say, God bless you. May the Lord be with you. We see this throughout the scripture. We see it in the epistles, in the salutations, in the openings, in the closings, the benedictions. We see Paul blessing the church. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord, uh, you know, 
can may you grow in grace, Peter said, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's invoking a benediction and a blessing upon them. Speak blessings over people. Speak blessings over people in your prayer for them. Speak blessings over people when you talk with them. Speak blessings over people when you, when you talk about them. And speak blessings over people when you just think about them. And speak blessings over those people that cut you off on 81 in the morning when you're trying to get to them. Wow. If everyone would drive like me, there would never be an accident, right? Oh, wait, I had one a few years ago. I hit a one. I forgot about that. But uh, speak blessings. Let there be blessings come out. You are directing God's goodness toward them. That's what happens with our words. Our words have that kind of power. It's a form of intercession for someone else. Speak blessings over your grandchildren. I lay my hand on them. I don't always make a big deal about it. Getting ready to leave. Spread hug pop. Just lay my hand on them. Under my breath. I'm going to keep these things. Bless them. May they, I used to pray for my own children. May they never know a day when they don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. I'm praying for my son. Bless him. Bless him. Help him. It's easy to get frustrated with him. Yes. Of where he's living and how he acts and responds at times to things. But I think of all the positive things about his life. A man is a hard working, hard working man. His nose to the grindstone. And we love him. I tell my kids all the time, hey, I love him. You know, when I was a kid, I had wonderful parents. Wonderful parents. Now, they weren't perfect. But the parent is. I mean, they didn't get drunk, they didn't shoot up, they didn't beat us with an inch of our life. We never went hungry, as you can see. Never went hungry a day in my life. But uh, <clears throat> if I would have said to my father, Do you love me? You know what he would have said? He would not have answered it. Not. Because in his mind, I home every night, pursue at the table, I work a job, I have no vacations, you have clothing, you have shoes, you have a clean house. My mother used to say, You love me, mother. And I go to her and she all step. Don't cry me so much. Oh, come on. Come on. It just wasn't that generation, I guess. Depression era generation. I tell my kids all the time, I love you. God forbid it should be the last time I get to say that. As long as I go, it's okay. But for, to lose them would be devastating. Bless you. On the phone. I talk to Alice on the phone with Rachel. Alice is like me. She's a phone person. Rachel, she may answer her phone two or three times a year, and that's it. <laughs> she believes in voicemail and texting. And her text is bad, but she believes it. <laughs> but I will say to her, hey, I love you. I say that to my cousin. My cousin's like my sister. I talk to my brother every day on the phone. Now, we don't say to each other, I love you. I, and that's because we both have enough of our father in us. That, uh, but can you imagine? I'm 58, I'll be 58 years old. My brother's going to be 60. When we talk every day on the phone. Is it always convenient to talk on the phone every day? No. But it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to pray with him over the phone. And at times he's prayed for me or prayed for my grandchildren over the phone when they were sick. Bless people. Bless them. We miss that sometimes in Pentecost because, you know, when I, the one church I pastored, they were a little more formal than. They weren't necessarily Pentecostal. They were moving forward. Every the end of every service, I could pronounce a benediction over them. And I had more than one person say to me, on the way out the door, it's a benediction. Thank you. I'm so glad for that benediction. And I always want to say, what do you think of that sermon? Come on. <laughs> the sermon before that benediction was setting up for that benediction. You know? But they were blessed by it. Don't let just being able to say to people, God bless you, just be something that you get into that habit. But let it truly come from your heart. Let it truly be led by the Holy Spirit. A timely word, spoken in, in at the appropriate time. Proverbs 25. <clears throat> when
Lean on God before you meet with people. Lean on God as people are talking. It's amazing. One of the things that uh, that I struggle with sometimes at work in my uh, uh, quality monitoring, and I don't really care what I do for a quality monitoring, it's whatever they want. They told me this past month, they said, you're, you've been perfect so far this month, you have two more to go. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pass you one. But one of the things that we're always told is, you know how you bump into people when you're talking to them? Like, let's say Susan and I start to have a conversation, and we both start talking at the same time. That's bumping into them. As a good customer service rep, I'm supposed to stop right then and there. It's a little hard for me. The same way some people take forever to get to the point. And I look down at the phone, and at the beginning of the phone call, it's going on three minutes, and the only thing I've said so far is, my name is Dave, how may I help you? And I, I got the gist. I know where you're at. I don't need to know you wore a blue blouse when you went to the dentist, and they made fun of it. I don't need to know that. And I will cut them off. And sometimes, it's I talked to an elderly couple this past week. They told the same story four or five times. It was 35 minutes of my life that I'll never have back again. And finally, I just, you know, hey, you know what? I We got it. We're going to take care of it. I had to do that a couple times. You're not supposed to bump into people. You're not supposed to talk over them. That's hard for me because I'm a take charge kind of guy. It's cut to the chase. Let's get it fixed. But wait on God when people begin a conversation, they begin to talk, they begin to pray. How am I going to respond? Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. As an earring of gold in an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon a immediate ear. As the cold of snow is in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that sent for him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. In Ecclesiastes we read that there's a time, and this is a this has always been a tough one for me. This is what Kitty keeps reminding me of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes 3 7. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Kitty constantly reminds me about my adult children, especially the girls that are out on their own. She'll say to me, it's their life. It's their business. What do you say, Katie? I should keep them out shut. So she said, keep them out shut. <laughs> there's a way that seems greater than my kids, and then there's my way. That's the way I do it. Say, I'm a thus saith the Lord kind of guy, and Kitty's just a kind of fall back and pray for him kind of person. But we are going to be judged for every idle word we speak, is what Jesus said. Every idle word. What does that mean? That means words that were spoken that should not have been spoken. Words that were spoken that we, we said, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord did not thus say. So a timely word. And then it's the tone of our words that matter when we bless people. What's our mega message? You know what a mega message is? Oh, I've been trained in customer service, can't you? Mega message is like a megaphone that projects a megatone. And I always have, and I've, I've told this to my family, doesn't get this. It's not so much what you just said, it's how you just said it. And of course, I hear from my fucking age, I'm actually giving you a call if you want to fix it. I say to my kids, you can say to someone, like, you can say, I used to say this to my kids, my son, my son is the kind of kid, and he still is, he'll protest if you've asked him to do something, or tell him that he has something, he will protest the whole time as he's going and getting it done. The girls will just look at you and say yes, and then never do it. But I used to tell him, he used to tell my son, he used to say this one, I told him I was going to do it. But I, it's how you said it. And I said, well, you get that done. Yes, I'm going to get done. I'll do it. <laughs> Better to have said, I'm happy to take care of that for you. 
Yeah, I'm going to get that. It's how we say things. How we speak is probably just as important as to what we speak. Let's run back to Proverbs. We're almost done. We're going to gather around in prayer. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15 and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. It's hard for me to have a soft answer. I, I, sometimes I move like a bull in a china closet. But a soft answer would have been far better. It's hard to have a soft answer when someone's coming at you with a strong, hard tone. I remind myself all the time, don't buy into what their attitude and what their spirit is at this time. Don't do that. Don't become their anger. I can tell in conversations, right from the get-go, if it's going to be good or if it's not. I like for you to look at a clean. Right, it's just go get a cup of coffee and relax on the cup. That's what it was. <laughs> and you know, I love it when our company is right. And they get angry. And I tell them, have a nice day. That makes me get angry. They've got they, maybe they got other issues. Maybe they've got a flat tire or something that morning. Psalm chapter 18. Psalm 18, verse 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath upheld me, and thy gentleness, thy gentleness hath made me great. Gentleness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. I was not like this as a dad. I, I coached my girls in parenting, and if they were to be honest, they would sit there and say to themselves, it wasn't like that with us. Sometimes they say it's true. We mellow with age. And I will tell them, gentleness, gentleness, easy, easy. You have to be careful how you turn your kid around with you. Hold out, be careful how you do that. Gentle, they get frustrated with you. That's okay. I don't know. They do Thy gentleness hath made me great. God has been gentle with us. Be gentle with people. Be gentle with them. You say, yep, they'll walk all over you. They walked all over Jesus. Make me more like you. That, that he, he suffered the contradiction of sinners, yet he never wavered in his mission. I'm going to move back here quickly close. Because my legs bother me. I'd sit in that pew and speak that way, but like the fall of God, I don't know about that. Gentleness, meekness. Jesus was meek and lowly. Now, there were times when Jesus cleansed the temple. There was not just the softer side of Jesus, there was the stern side. But for the sake of this message today, I want you to think about the gentleness of Christ. This idea of speaking a blessing over people. What does it say in Mark? That they brought the children to Jesus. That he might what? Bless them. I would love to have been there to see them. Can you imagine Jesus with kids? Can you imagine the things the kids said to him? Can you imagine? His response, his reaction. I'll tell you a little story. My wife doesn't mind I tell this. The other night, the kids were at the house. I was at work. And they were going to go to Walmart. And Olivia realizes that Kitty wears dentures. And she wanted her grandmother to take her teeth out of her mouth. Evidently, Junior had never known this information about his grandma. And he was freaked out. <laughs> oh, 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 don't, don't do that. Oh, oh. So as they were pulling into the park,
parking lot of Walmart, Junior says to his grandmother, Hey, don't take your teeth out of Walmart. <laughs> If you guys ever see people without the teeth at Walmart, let me know. Susan, just the things that kids say. I told my grandson one day, you know, Pop was a little boy at one time, and you get that look and say, Yeah, I used to go to school. I said, But when I was your age, and I tell Alice this, we lived in Newport, we lived at Fifth Street, and the school must have been three quarters of a mile or half a mile away. And my mother walked me five years old when I went to start her first grade because I turned six in October. She walked me the first day of school and every day thereafter I walked by myself. You don't let a kid do that today. But I was telling Junior, I said, I didn't have the van or a bus to up when I was here. I walked to school. And he said to me, what? With your cane? I said, well, I didn't always have the cane. <laughs> Thank you. 